in Macon, you know, we have the benefit of having incredible historic houses, but it takes a special partner or a special um, homeowner to actually tackle those projects. And so things like the Bennett House or the Bonnie Bray Bedgood House on Georgia Avenue, those are very ambitious preservation projects. And it really takes someone um, who, A, has the... um, sort of the wherewithal and kind of the stomach for it, um, and also, of course, the financial resources. But more than that, it takes someone who has the passion for that house because without that passion and that interest, then they will never succeed with that project, if that makes sense. My name is Ethel Garlington. I'm the executive director of Historic Macon Foundation. A lot of times people incorrectly think that if they buy a new home that it'll be quote-unquote maintenance-free. And so those, you know, then people think of historic houses as constant projects and things like that. But what we tell people is that no matter what home you buy, new or old, it will require maintenance. Um, And so the nice thing about historic houses is that generally speaking, um, once you, you know, fix up a historic house, you get into it, you get the bones right, you get all the systems updated, those materials that are there that were built originally, those materials will continue to last indefinitely. Things like hard pine and um, maybe a slate roof or stone. You know, those materials have been around for 100 or 200 years, and they will continue to survive, whereas a new house or new material, no one knows how long some of these products will last. And we've already seen some of these products failing. So, um, you know, I think for... The bang for your buck in terms of investment, obviously a historic house is, is better. But again, like with any house, you're going to have to maintain it. And it will be a long-term relationship with your house. You know, we're not thinking of these houses or these buildings as sort of silos. We really see the neighborhood and the community as the bigger impact. And so when people are out on their porch or out in their yard or working on their house, they're interacting with their neighbors, they're more engaged with their neighborhood, um, and it just makes for a better community and a better quality of life. At Historic Macon, you know, we, we know that we can't do all of these houses. You know, we need other people um, tackling these houses and these projects. And one of the ways that we can help educate homeowners or potential buyers is to offer more hands-on opportunities. So in Preservation Month, which is May, We're going to be doing some hands-on window workshops so people can actually learn how to reglaze their windows. But we've also in the past offered the lead certification course, and that is a state and federal um, mandated program that requires um, paint contractors or any contractor that's um, sort of disturbing paint before the 1970s, late 1970s, that may have lead paint. They have to go through the certification process in order to be able to work on these houses. It's so interesting. For a long time, preservation as an industry or as a movement focused on those houses, sort of the grand, the high style, um, for lack of a better word, the rich people in the communities, you know, because those were sort of the textbook houses to save. In a lot of communities, they made those houses into house museums things like the Hay House. I mean, that's the grandest house in Macon. And luckily it survived well as a house museum and event facility. But lots of those houses across the country just don't work as house museums anymore. And so we're seeing a national trend where people also aren't typically living in houses that big. You know, people are going after smaller, more manageable square footage. But you know, things like the Bedgood House will actually have some apartments in it to help divvy up that space. Um, but, you know, those houses are just as important as houses, the shotguns in Bells Hill, because they all, all these houses, all these buildings represent and tell the story of our community. I mean, it's a tapestry in our community, and those are um, vital to the long-term success of our community because it also means that we're drawing um People who do want those big houses, you know, people are moving from Atlanta to buy some of these houses on College Street or, um, you know, people in North Macon who have typically lived in large McMansions are more interested in living in these big houses downtown, I think because of the quality of life benefits, you know, they can walk downtown, they can um, 
go to Mercer. They can walk to Tattnall Square Park. They can go to the, um, um, the McDuffie Center for the Strings. So anyway, I think it's they, they feel more of that community downtown or in town. So the Bennett House is probably one of the reasons that I moved to Macon. So my wife and I met in graduate school at the University of Georgia. And one of the cool things about that program, the preservation program there, was that we were in the field as much as possible. So um, one of the memorable trips that we did came through Macon. Obviously, we went to the Hay House, but one of our um, one of our colleagues or one of our, one of the other students in the program is from Macon, had worked at the Hay House and had a relationship with the Bennetts. So she was able to get our class into um, into the house. And you can imagine as a preservation grad student to walk through that house, walk down into the spring, the whole class stood around the edge of the pool and with the, you know, the echo chamber and, you, you know, it was just, it made such an impression on me that that was, that trip was the only time I'd been to Macon before I came down for the interview for this position. And so thinking as we were in Knoxville, thinking about moving to Macon, we were reminiscing about that trip and reminiscing about that house in particular and of course the Hay House, but the house has always just sort of had this kind of hook on me and just how cool it is and how fascinating it is. So I'm thrilled that Darren has has taken that one on because you know people didn't really know what the future of that house was going to be. And so for someone like Darren who has volunteered and dedicated so much time to the Hay House, he knows the significance of that the Bennett House. So um, and he's, you know, he's doing it right. He's taking it slowly. He's working with the Georgia Trust. I mean, I heard that they're looking at um, the geothermal possibilities of that spring for the house. So I just think, again, thinking about matching people with buildings, it seems to me that that, that house couldn't have found a better steward. I would recommend wherever you are finding the nonprofit historic preservation group in your town. And I know not all towns have that group, but typically a town, you know, like our size of Macon, we have a little over 100,000 people, you know, we've got a very robust organization. So most towns of our size will have some group that's looking out for the old buildings. And that's a great place to start because those groups are usually plugged in with that community. Also, of course, the National Trust for Historic Preservation that has some resources on their website. Um, but again, I would try to get that local contact and that local group.